Joyce Meyer Ministries dankt haar donateurs die deze uitzending mogelijk maakten. I would actually go so far as to say that I think that this business of being mad at people and angry and bitter and resentful is probably one of the most important lessons that Jesus came to teach us. And if we never get this one right, then none of the rest of it's ever going to go right either. You talk about getting an upgrade in power in your life. Man, you just start living free of anger and offense and see what God does for you. You know why? You know why he'll honor you? Because he knows it's hard. But if you wait on him to be your vindicator, people will never get by with hurting you. God will always bring it back around and reward you. But only if we do it his way. Actually, there's a scripture in Hebrews 12, 15 that says, help one another secure grace so that you do not get bitter when you're hurt or mistreated. Burnt, but not bitter. So he's actually saying here that it's our job as brothers and sisters in Christ to kind of watch over one another in this area And we need to be wise enough with our friends and the people that we're around instead of when you're having coffee with somebody and they're telling you this long tale about what somebody did to them and how upset they are. Don't just sit there and agree with them. Try to talk them out of it. Amen. Try to help them understand that it's a waste of time, a waste of God's time, a waste of their time, and it is not in any way, shape, or form going to solve their problem. Otherwise, you know what happens? What they tell you gets inside of you. Now, all of a sudden, you don't like this person that didn't even do anything to you. <laughs> First of all, you're not even supposed to believe anything you hear except in the mouth of two or three reliable witnesses. So we got to stop just believing gossip and getting mad at people because somebody said something that we don't even know is true. Amen. Amen. Come on, if we're going to study the Bible, let's live it. Otherwise, we're just playing games. We're just being counterfeits. What good does it do to underline in your Bible if we're not going to do? Now, you know, we all fail and we all make mistakes and we keep getting forgiveness and we go on. But we got to be serious about this. We are living in very serious times. And I would imagine that you are fairly serious or you wouldn't have taken a Friday night to come here and fight the traffic you fought to get in here. Some of you traveled a long way. You paid for hotels. You're going to be back here all day again tomorrow. And, you know, it takes a lot to put on one of these things. I mean, we probably brought 50 people with us, seven semi-trucks fully loaded. I mean, it takes a day to set this whole place up. This is serious business. God goes to extremes to get his word to his people. This is not just an event. This is not just a hope. I want to see what she looks like in person compared to TV. <laughs> You can get all the pictures of me you want. You don't need to come out here just to do that. But please listen to me this weekend. I believe this is a word from God for your life, and this can turn some people's lives around if you'll get a hold of this. Some of you, this is an actual divine appointment. I mean, God sent you here because you desperately need this word. And let me tell you something. If you make a choice to forgive somebody and you don't feel any different, don't let the devil deceive you into thinking that you did not forgive. How you feel has nothing to do with it. If you pray for them, you don't gossip about them, you speak well of them, and if there's a need that comes up that you can meet, you meet that need, that is the full force of forgiveness. Because people can have gooey feelings about somebody and do none of that. Hebrews 12, 15. See to it that no one falls short of God's grace, that no root of resentment springs up and causes trouble, and many be defiled by it. Don't just try to forgive people. 
Pray that God will enable you to forgive. And you don't even have to wait until you're mad at somebody to pray that prayer. Why not pray that every day? God, the minute that anybody offends me, grant me the grace to forgive quickly. Help me realize what a mess I am and how often you forgive me. Please, God, help me. The longer the feelings continue, the more deeply rooted they become, and bitter roots always produce bitter fruits. 2 Corinthians 1.10, forgive to keep Satan from getting an advantage over you. How much plainer can it be? Don't open doors for the devil by staying mad. Studying the nature of the devil is just good for all of us every once in a while. Because you talk about sneaky. <laughs> I mean, ugh. The stuff that he does, and we just let him get by with it. We just not paying any attention to what's going on. Pray that God will show you yourself. And that he'll show you truth. And then hang on to your seat. <laughs> now, I love this scripture. Colossians 3.19. Because it says, husbands, love your wives with an affectionate, sympathetic, selfless love that always seeks the best for her. How many of you ladies like that? I like that. And husbands, do not be bitter or resentful toward your wife because of the responsibilities of marriage. <laughs> So I was thinking that over, and I thought, now what in the world does that scripture mean? Well, first of all, I mean, the same thing goes for wives. It, this just happens to talk about husbands, and I'd rather talk about husbands than wives, and since I've got the platform, that's what we'll do. <laughs> okay, maybe um, she has not met all of his expectations. Do You know, I don't think it's what people do that make us so upset as what we expected them to do. And a lot of times we have unrealistic expectations of people. Well, I, I expect you to keep me happy all the time. I used to get so mad at Dave because he wasn't keeping me happy. He'd, he'd go play golf. Now I wasn't happy. And Dave needed to make me happy. And God said, why don't you take responsibility for your own joy? It's not Dave's job. Because you see, that right there might set some woman free. No, maybe, could be. <laughs> Come on, are you, are you expecting somebody else to keep you happy all the time? It's an unrealistic expectation. And you'll end up being bitter about something that God's never gonna give you because he doesn't want you depending on other people for your joy, he wants you depending on him. <laughs> he feels trapped. He's been married 30 years, and now he has all these responsibilities, and he isn't happy. You know what? Maybe if he lived to make her happy, he'd be happier. <laughs> or if she lived to make him happy, she'd be happier. Oh, uh, you like the he part better. <laughs> Bitterness often begins with several small offenses. Little things that we never bring closure to. Little things about that other person that just bug you. Don't have a file in your computer where you store all the little things that you don't like about somebody. The word offense comes from a Greek word, scandalon, and it was actually the part of a trap on which the bait hung that lured the animals into the trap for slaughter. So when Satan dangles the temptation to be offended in front of us, it's an invitation to just run right into his trap. Do you know how many people today are offended? I have never seen a time when people were more touchy. I mean, it's like people get mad at you for breathing. You don't, you don't even know. It's like, what? <laughs> I 
Paul said that he really worked with God to make sure that his heart was void of offense toward God and man. I honestly think this is something that we could deal with every day in our prayers. God, am I mad at anybody? If I am, show me who it is. Have I not completely forgiven somebody? Am I, do I have any offense in my heart? How much better do you think your day would be if maybe you'd take care of all that early in the morning and just get it over with? Come on. Matthew chapter 24 is a chapter in the Bible about the sign of end times. And you got all these wars and rumors of wars and famines and earthquakes and diverse places and all these different things. But there's a couple of scriptures, verse 10 and verse 12, that I don't think we pay enough attention to. And there are also signs of the end time. And verse 10 says, in the last days, many will be offended. And they will stumble and fall. Jesus called himself a rock of offense over which men stumbled. And what that meant was people could be going along and growing in their walk with God, but then when they came to something that was hard for them to understand or hard to do, and it offended them, like in John 6 when he said, your forefathers ate manna in the wilderness and they, they were excited because of the miracles, but I want to deal with you a different way. I want you to take me at my word eat my body and drink my blood. And they were like, I'm out of here. <laughs> and it actually says that many of them went back to their old associations. They didn't stick around long enough to let him teach them what they were really saying. So they stumbled. When we get offended, we can't grow anymore. Do you understand that? As long as you're angry, you're not growing spiritually. As long as you're offended, you can go to church six times a week. You're not growing spiritually. You can hear all kinds of good stuff, but you can't keep it on the inside of you because this is a very important issue. I would actually go so far as to say that I think that this business of being mad at people and angry and bitter and resentful is probably one of the most important lessons that Jesus came to teach us. And if we never get this one right, then none of the rest of it's ever gonna go right either. Amen. And then verse 12 says, the love of the great body of people will grow cold in the last days. And that's what Satan wants. He wants a stronghold of cold love. He doesn't want us to love each other because that's where our power is at. And he tells us to love each other unconditionally. And to do that, you gotta be good at giving mercy. Amen? Sometimes we say, well, I'll forgive you, but I'll never forget it. Well, here's a little story. There was a priest in the Philippines who carried the burden of a secret sin he'd committed many years before. He had repented, but he still had no sense of God's forgiveness. In his church was a woman who claimed to have visions in which she spoke with Christ, and he said to her, and he was with her. So the priest, however, was skeptical about this woman, but to test her, he said, well, the next time you speak with Christ, I want you to ask him what sin your priest committed when he was in Bible college. So the woman agreed to do so. A few days later, the priest asked, well, did Christ visit you in your dreams? Yes, he did, she said. And did you ask him what sin I committed while I was in Bible college? Yes, I did. Well, what did he say? He said, I don't remember. Come on. I don't remember. See, and that's actually possible. If you let go of things real quick, I'm asking you to get a master's degree in forgiveness. <laughs> I mean, just be the best of anybody at forgiving. Don't waste any more of your time. I mean, if you really stop and think about it, if you go home and think about this for 10 minutes tonight, you'll realize that staying mad at somebody does no good. It doesn't change them, but it does change you. So we have to keep our love walk stirred up. First Peter says, above all, have fervent, 
unfailing love for one another. If I didn't have to record different things for television, I could go everywhere that I went and preach on love, what it really means to love. Love is not just a sermon, it's not just a word, it's not just something that we say to people, but it's action. Love is doing things for people. It's helping people that are hurting. It's building people up. It's taking time with people. Something we don't have much of today. We don't have much time for people. Relationships are going to pot because nobody wants to take any time to talk to anybody. We'll just send a text and they'll answer back K and that's it. You know. Not that you probably would get a text from me, but if I sent you a text, do not send me back a message that says K. <laughs> I mean, if we're too lazy, lazy to even say okay. <laughs> Sometimes I have to ask, what does this mean? How many of you agree? We're in such a big hurry now, we can't even write out a whole sentence. <laughs> Above all, have fervent, unfailing love for one another because love covers a multitude of sins. It overlooks unkindness and unselfishly seeks the best for other people. There's an updated version of the Amplified Bible out, which is what I use, and they use the phrase in there, unself that love unselfishly seeks the best for other people. Love is shed or brought in our hearts by the Holy Ghost, but we can either keep it stirred up or we can let it grow cold. And this has been very important to me in the last 12 or 15 years of my life, and I share it in a lot of my messages, and I don't intend to stop. If you want to keep your love stirred up, there's certain things you have to do. Number one, ask God every day what you can do for somebody else. Don't wait for three prophecies and two trumpet blasts <laughs> and an angelic appearance. Now, God, if you really, if you really want me to help them, God, I mean, like, really want me to. Listen to what people say they want and need and provide it. Stop asking God to do things for people that you could do and just don't want to. God, Mabel's behind on her rent. She needs help. <laughs> well, <laughs> how about if you get a hundred bucks out of your pocket and help her? Well, I have plans for my money. <laughs> Come on, am I, am I telling the truth? I'm telling the truth. And you know what? The only way I know this is because I've had to take this from God first before I get to dish it out to anybody. I'm not pointing fingers at anybody else. This is how God has dealt with me, some of the things that he's taught me, and really all I'm doing is just letting you eat off my plate. Set aside an amount of money each month beyond your regular giving now, come on, I'm giving you a homework assignment. Set aside an amount of money each month beyond your regular giving, and it's not going to be money you're going to get a tax write-off for. <laughs> you know, this is going to just be money to bless people with. It may be somebody that's poor, but it doesn't have to be. Just because somebody's not poor doesn't mean they don't need to be blessed. I mean, the richest person you know may need a blessing worse than anybody else that you know. Because when people have a lot, people are usually always wanting something from them and nobody thinks about giving to them. Come on, am I right? Look for opportunities to be a blessing. I mean, get determined. Say, I am not going to let one day of my life go by that I don't bless somebody. 
Every day, I, I, don't get, I don't get around to it every day, but every day I try to give something away. Something. Something out of my closet. You know how much stuff you got laying around your house that could be a blessing to somebody else and you're keeping it just in case? <laughs> and if in case ever comes, you won't know where it's at. <laughs> and you'll go buy another one anyway. Come on, I'm telling you the truth. You doing okay out there? Galatians 6.10 says, be mindful to be a blessing, especially to the household of faith. Now, here's what I'm saying, if I, if I could sum this up. Instead of being mad and bitter and offended and angry, even like secretly angry, <laughs> I love you with the love of the Lord, but every time I see you, it's like... Come on, you get, can, let, let me see you guys do that. Oh, I'm better at it than you are. You know, it's a feeling we get, isn't it? It's just like. Oh, did you have to come? I wouldn't have went to that baby shower if I'd have known you were going to be there. And I'm sure not going to sit by you. <laughs> Can I tell you something? God is not nearly as interested in your little Sunday morning visit <laughs> as he is in how you live the rest of your life <laughs> all week long. I mean, I'm sure God's proud of you that you came here tonight. You took a Friday night to come. But to be honest, you have wasted your time if you don't go out of here and put some of these principles into practice. I don't want to be mad at anybody. Being mad's hard work. The Bible says in Proverbs 19, 11, good sense and discretion make a man slow to anger, and it is his honor and glory to overlook an offense without seeking revenge and harboring resentment. Okay, here's the kicker. You know what the word glory means? It's his glory to overlook an offense. It means the manifested excellence of God. So if I can translate this properly it's an honor and will produce the manifested excellence of God in your life if you overlook a transgression or an offense and don't seek revenge and harbor resentment come on are you waiting for God to do some big things for you how many of you are waiting for God to do some big things for you I mean you really want big time favor well, I do, but you know what? I know that I'll never have it if I don't stay free from that stuff. You can't let it get you. It's the devil. Don't let it get you. Well, you're laying around in bed at night about to drift off, and here comes the thoughts. <laughs> Every once in a while, I'll find myself just being, you know, like empty-headed and... Uh, and then all of a sudden, I'm thinking about some specific thing my dad did to me that I detested. And you know what I'll do? I'll say, no. Amen. Come on, open your mouth and talk back to the devil. Just say, no. I'm not going there. There is a place called there, and you used to live there, but you're not going there anymore. Amen. Amen. Fight for your life. Well, we all need to learn to do things God's way, and that means living free from anger and offense and walking in forgiveness, the forgiveness that God offers us, but also giving that to other people. When we do that, if somebody has wronged us, God will vindicate us.
Today we are having a medical camp on behalf of Joyce Mayor Ministries. It's a big event for the village people so that they can receive medication and the love of Christ. That's what is happening here right now. There are so many instances where people who have come here, they have been suffering from those diseases or infections from quite a long, but they never go to a medical help because they don't have a finance even for travel. People are quite receptive to us because they are seeing that we are helping them beyond just sharing the gospel. And this event has been uh, being planned in our minds and hearts for the past two, three months. So the church in Hyderabad is praying and the village church has been praying continuously. And that's what we are seeing that God's grace, everything is going on smoothly. <laughs> Thank you very much for your contribution to India and because of your help, your, we are you making us to go every corner, looking every place. And without your support, we cannot go. Met deze mobiele kliniek geven we bij Hand of Hope elke maand nieuwe hoop aan duizenden mensen. Hier krijgen de patiënten alles op één plek. Van oogtesten tot röntgenfoto's tot het verstrekken van medicatie. En dat allemaal dankzij de vele donateurs die dit werk steunen. You know, the Word of God teaches us that if we are willing to share what we have, God can multiply that and make it into a lot more than what we started with. So please share. Help ons om andere mensen te kunnen helpen. Bel ons 026 20 22 100 of ga naar joyce-meijer.nl slash partner. Elk gebed en elke donatie telt. Samen veranderen we de wereld. Werk, huishouden, vrije tijd en nog veel meer. Het moederschap is een fulltime uitdaging. Groeit alles je soms boven het hoofd? Krijg weer rust, zelfvertrouwen en vreugde die dieper gaat. Laat je inspireren door Joyce Meyer, zelf moeder van vier kinderen. Je hebt het verdiend. Het boek van Joyce Meyer, de zelfverzekerde moeder. Bestel je eigen exemplaar nu via joyce-meyer.nl of telefonisch via 026 2022 100. Vragen? Bel ons op. Wij zijn er voor je. Telefoonnummer 026 20 22 100.